Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready for us to pray now? Praise God. Say these words with me. Say, Father, I demand my daily bread today. I receive it right now. Every angel, go get the things I need to meet today's need. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, you know what? That bill is going to be paid today. Praise God. Don't be afraid. It will be paid today. How do I know it's going to be paid today? Because you just collected it. Praise God. Yeah, you just collected it. A testimony is coming your way. Fear not. I'm confident because the Lord told me to pray this prayer with you today. So if you believe it and you believe me that I heard from the Lord, praise God, then you have a miracle. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 12. Now we've been on this and until we exhaust everything that is in here, Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, I'm taking on that word, holy and acceptable unto God. See, you present yourself holy. So what does it mean to present your bodies as a living sacrifice in a holy manner? That's what we've been talking about since last week. And listen to me. God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, as you listen to this broadcast, hear me. Changes are taking place in your life. Every body in your life is being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed. Things are changing for your life, and they are changing for good. You're getting good news. Yeah, good news is coming your way today. Praise God. I'm just telling you what to expect as we go into God's word right now. So he says, now verse 2, he says, Be not conformed to this world, and but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I've been telling you, the reason you need to renew your mind and what you renew it with is God's truth, God's word. You don't set your mind to be conformed to the reasoning of this age. Why? Because there are rulers behind the darkness of this age. There are rulers behind the economic darkness. And when you follow those rulers, you will end up in poverty. There are rulers behind the, the health darkness. There are rulers behind the spirit of death. There are rulers behind poverty. There are rulers behind any form of darkness that you can think about. But hey, that's the reason we are here. We are here to obey the Lord and to change those thoughts, change those mindsets. Hey, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are those strongholds? The strongholds are those thoughts, those rulers has enforced over your life for so long, now you believe it as static. You believe it as truth. That is now your truth. Hey, if it is not God that said it, and if it is not for your good, it is not your truth. Praise God. No, 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 no. It is not your truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Can you find death in Jesus? No, sir. Can you find poverty in Jesus? No, sir. Can you find sickness in Jesus? No, sir. He says he himself took our infirmity and carried our diseases. He took it. He took it. Now, he took it because he doesn't want you to suffer. So John says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Why? Because you don't find sickness in Jesus. Jesus is not going to put sickness on you. Jesus is not going to bring death to you. I told you already. 
He won't bring death to you as a way to bring you home. No, death is not his vehicle. No, 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 never. If you go through death, you don't get to that des de destination that you think you're going. You are going to wait there until he comes. So you are not going to meet him. You are going to wait down there. Praise God. With bond as, a, as, a, as, a, as a prisoner of the spirit of death until Jesus comes. So you'll be there praying that we should hurry up this work for Jesus to come, praise God. Because you were thinking you're going to go to where Jesus is. Jesus is alive, so you can't go to where he is through death. Let that sink, praise God. Now, what were we dealing with? The ruler of the darkness of this age. And we are uprooting, you see, that's it, the weapons of our warfare. This is what they do. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of those strongholds, casting down imaginations. All these are imaginations, wrong imaginations. He says, we are casting them down. How do we cast them down? He says, if we obey his word, if we obey every voice, his voice indeed, that's actually what he said in Exodus chapter 19 verse 5, if we obey his voice indeed and keep his covenant, he's going to do exactly what Peter said he's done already to us. What's that? He says we are a chosen generation, a, a peculiar people. God says, now why are we peculiar people to God? Because we are the keepers of his word. We don't just confess that, you know, we say, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, to show for the praises of him. What are the praises of him? How do we show forth the praises of him? It is only when we begin to obey his voice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, he, he spoke those words in Exodus chapter 19 and, and verse 5 and 6. He spoke those words there. And now guess what? God was now talking to Joshua after Moses was gone. And by this time, God had given them laws and things, you know. And God, let me show you Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua 1, 8. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. And it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. What's God saying to Joshua? He's saying the same thing. Joshua, present yourself as a living sacrifice unto me. How do I present myself as a living sacrifice unto you? Hey, Joshua, this is it. Fill your mouth with this book of the law. Fill your mouth with it. When you fill your mouth with it, you will make your way prosperous. You will have good success. Now I want to bring something to your attention. You look at this scripture and then you say, you know, we, we quote this scripture. This is one of the first scriptures you will learn as a child of God growing up, as a child, you know, growing up, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So, and when we say that, we are referring to the Bible. Now, you see, when you read things like this, what you see matters a lot. Now, for many years, all we saw there was, this is the secret of prosperity. What's the secret to prosperity? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So if I meditate on the word of God, if I, if I hold on to this book and don't let it depart from my mouth and from my heart, I will make my way prosperous. Hey, the secret in this is not the book of the law. The secret in this instruction is the fact that Joshua went to receive instructions from the Lord. So the Lord gave him his instruction. This was Joshua's instruction. What is Joshua's instruction? The series book of the Lord that Moses gave to you. Yes, sir. Don't let it depart out, out of your mouth. Meditate there in day and night. That's how to be a success. Wow. Thank you, Lord. So anytime Joshua looks at the book of the law, you know what he remembers? He remembers the instruction that God gave to him. That's all he remembers. Now, the power of the book of the law making his way prosperous is in the instruction that came to him concerning the book. I want you to get this. Because if you don't understand this, <laughs> you won't see the power working in your life. 
The power is in the instruction. So what do I do with this information? I think of a new job that God has given to me. So what do I do? I go before the Lord and say, Lord, you give Joshua an instruction on how to make his way prosperous. And Lord, what's my instruction? Now the instruction God begins to give to you is what you now use to renew your mind. See, now because that, that instruction, when you accept it, it will transform your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's where the transformation begins. I'll show you something. Now, to us today, Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter 3. Look at what he says to us. Verse 16, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now the same instruction God gave to Joshua is the same instruction we are receiving here. And what is it? He's not telling us to go cram the Bible and to, you understand? No, 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 that's not what he said. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. What does it mean, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly? I'll explain that to you in a moment. What does it mean? I'll tell you. What has the Lord said to you concerning every area of your life? Has he spoken yet? Or have you paid attention to what he is saying to you? See, now, when it comes to finances, what has God told you? Have you fellowshiped with him enough to hear him? When it comes to your health, what has God told you? When it comes to your job, what has God told you? When it comes to your marriage, what has God told you? Now, I'm not saying what the Bible says. No, you see, he's not saying, let the book of the law dwell in you richly. He's saying, let the word, the word of Christ. What is Christ? Christ is the Holy Spirit. What, the, let the word of the Holy Spirit dwell in you richly. All right, so concerning my marriage, I want to get married. What do I do? I go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm attempting this institution called marriage. What do you have to tell me concerning it? How do I choose a wife? How do I stay married? How do I have a great family? How do I raise godly children? How do I do all these things? Now, you go before the Lord in fellowship and in prayer like that. Soon, the Lord will begin to minister to you. Say, son, this is the kind of person you, you need to get married to. Hey, this is, this is the kind of family you should have. This is the you know, He begins to tell you all the secrets. Now, when he tells you those things, why is he telling you this thing? Because now you are a peculiar treasure unto him. Why are you a peculiar treasure unto him? Because you've presented yourself as a living sacrifice. And you've made up your mind that I won't do anything except I hear him tell me what to do. That's the kind of life Jesus lived. Jesus said, my father has not left me alone. Why? Because I do only the things that please him. Now, what are the things that please him? The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And what is faith? Our faith comes by hearing and hearing the voice of God. So when Jesus said, I do only the things that please my father, he said, I do only what my father commands me to do. You don't please God by your own thinking. You don't tell yourself, ah, if I give God one million, eh, God will be very pleased with me. And you now start struggling to raise one million to give to God. You think he will be pleased? No, nah, it doesn't mean he will be pleased. Because the Bible says he gives seed to the sower. So he gives you the seed. Then the day he demands for it, say, Lord, it's all yours. No, it's yours. I mean, I know it's yours. Praise God. That's how it works. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't be conformed to this world. So concerning your finances, what has God said to you? Where is the word of Christ dwelling in your life richly? He didn't just say, let the word of Christ dwell in you. He said, let it dwell in you richly. I'm going to be explaining more of this tomorrow because our time is up. Praise God. But hey, listen. You are no longer normal. You are no longer a commoner. You have been separated by God, called his peculiar treasure. Praise God. Walk with this understanding. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.